consultations went to the provinces as well, where we could, I must say that I was, um, I didn't tell you, Comrade Fraser, that um, when I heard the story of um, Comrade Rachitanga, uh, who seated, uh, where's Comrade Rachitanga? He's sitting it. Yeah, he's sitting over there. I mean, he got on a taxi this morning from Limpopo to be able to be here. And that, that indicates the level of commitment of what we are dealing with here. And, and so we held a number of meetings. And then most of us here would have gone to Litule House at one stage or another with one delegation or another to deal with various issues of concern. Um, in most instances, it would end up with the Secretary General and a few of the officials in those meetings. I've been there twice, um, as, as on my own and with church leaders to express concerns about uh, the crisis we are facing. We then reached a stage where we felt we needed now to, to have a meeting with the president. And, and this decision was made a few months ago that it would be better to have a direct meeting with the president because most of the meetings ended up at the level of the secretariat. We then sent a letter on the 10th of September to ask for this meeting. Um, there have been exchanges between the Secretariat between the 10th of September and now. The meeting has not yet happened. And I just want to say that um, the veterans and uh, the, 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 some people say veterans some would say stalwarts. When you say stalwarts, you then have to move beyond just the definition of veterans in the constitution of the ANC or long-standing um, cadres of the movement who are seated here. Um, they feel it is critical at this moment to have a direct interaction with the president together with the top five, because it's a top six, together to discuss the level of crisis the movement is facing, which is impacting negatively uh, on the country, and also eroding the credibility of the movement, and that its credibility is at stake and that the leadership needs to do something about it. We, we were of the view that we should prepare a document which is going to be presented to you, send it to the leadership in advance, which we have done, and hoped to have that conversation before we became public about it. We have decided we should go public, and this is the collective again, because each one of us, wherever we go, the people ask, what are you doing with the crisis we are facing? And they expect that the elders, I would like to use the word in, in the tradition, the elders of the movement, in the tradition, when there's a crisis, people go to the elders and say, but what is happening? What are you doing about it? We are here to do exactly that, to make sure that there is an intervention that will change the trajectory the African National Congress is, 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 is following, to go back to what this movement should be about and be on the right side of history. I must say, this is now my personal view I mean, by yesterday, I was feeling the movement is beginning to be on the wrong side of history. And I'm pleased that the leaders were there in, in uh, Tswani, Pretoria, yesterday uh, 
to make sure that the country understands there is a right side of history which is about serving the interests of the people of South Africa. That's what it is about. And that, that movement I became part of more than 40 years ago was about that. It was about the people and not the individuals. It was not about the leaders. It was about the people. How do you change the conditions under which people are living? Um, and I just want to end with this historical background to say that we are looking forward to the president giving us a hearing. We would want to discuss ways in which we can make sure that there is a turnaround strategy to reposition the movement in a way that it will do what it is supposed to do. Let me end by with my discussion with my children. I've got uh, three generations of boys in my house. And um, when I talk to the first one, who was part of the youth league, he has just overgrown it now. Um, and I was talking about corruption and that you can't do this, this is an ANC, you need to behave in this way as a leader. He said to me that this problem is yours. It's your generation that's involved in this. So if our leaders are involved, what do you expect the young people to do? And then he said to me, please fix your problem. We will know what to do after you. It means the younger generation expects us to solve the problem we are facing so that they can then take the cue from us and lead the country in the direction in which it needs to go. And I've got the second and the third one uh, is very critical about all of us and, and, and feels that we need to really rethink about where we are. And so we have agreed as the collective here that we are here to intervene, make sure that the movement takes it the direction it should take so that our children can be proud about the past and the future we are going to. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Frank. But can I ask Comrade Cheryl to continue? Uh, thank you, Faisal. My name is Cheryl Carolus. Um, I am not going to go through the whole document because you will have it. I'll just do a summary of it and uh, you can engage with us afterwards. But perhaps to start off by saying who are we, these Talbots, and I put myself in the youth league of the veterans. <laughs> 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 and that's why we are, we, are, we, are, we 